nothing is impossible. Great things are possible. If that's your will, Father, great things can happen. And it's so exciting to not know what could come each day because of what you have planned out for us, God. So I pray that we will try our best to walk in your will. Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this service. I pray for everyone here. I know so many needs are represented, Father. So I just pray that each person will be able to give those to you, Father. And if they're not ready yet, if they're not able yet to give that to you, I pray that today maybe their fingers will be loosened on their grip just a little. I pray that seeds will be planted today and that great things will happen. Father, we just ask for you to please be with our pastor as he brings the sermon. Be with Sherry as she leads Children's Church. Father, please just bless this music, bless all of us, and I pray that you're pleased with our efforts, that each of us are giving you our best, our best praise, because you are worthy of it, God. Please take this offering and multiply it. Use it as only you can. We love you, God, and you and pray. Amen. You may be seated. Lord, I come, I confess. Bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I'd fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you.
time for Children's Church. You have a child between the ages of three and second grade and would like for them to attend, just have a meet at the middle back door. Remember at the end of the service to go down the stairs to sign them out. It's always a good, good sign when you see some of the kids run into the door. They love Children's Church, and I love that.
Will you pray with me? God, that is so amazing. Lord, we can sing with joy, with confidence, with strength in our heart that, Father, it is well. God, it's not on our timetable. It's not on what we want. Father, it it may not even be the situation, the circumstances that we would pick. But somehow, God, you give us supernatural peace where we can proclaim with one voice as a body of believers. God, we can proclaim in our hearts. It's well. Father, I thank you for the confidence, for the joy, for the peace that you put inside of each of us that make it possible for us to say that. God, and maybe this morning, if there's somebody that's not experiencing peace, Father, that they can experience hope that only comes from you. That, God, we may not be comfortable in the circumstances. We may not understand it. It may not be peaceful, but, God, we know on the other side of it, you've got something planned, and that gives us hope. And so in our hope, we proclaim this morning that it is well. Lord, thank you for making it well, for doing so much to even letting that be a song that we can utter from our lips. God, we pray for the rest of our service as we continue to worship you through looking at your word, that you would just continue to speak into our lives, into our hearts. God, open our ears, our minds to what you need us to hear this morning. Father, we love you so much. And we are grateful for all that you've done and what you're continuing to do in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning. So good to see each and every one of you this morning. Uh, y'all sounded like you were asleep. Good morning. Good morning. Come on. Surely you're having a better morning than that. Good morning. Good morning. Well, Jason's on my side this morning. Luke chapter 2, verse number 52. Last week we looked at uh, 2 Kings chapter 7, and I want to return there this morning, but I want to start uh, by looking at Luke chapter 2, verse number 52. The Bible says, And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature. That means he's growing up. He is maturing, but he's also Uh, physically growing as he should grow. But notice, if you would, the next little phrase. And he also grew in favor with God and with man. If I could ask two favors of you, I would ask that you reflect Jesus in this particular way. And all kind of things went through my mind this morning while we were worshiping. Uh, So many of our songs are designed to help you express your praise and all thanksgiving for all that God has done for us. I wish I had uh, could remember the exact lines in the song that really are about helping you grow in favor with God. But it's not just growing in favor with God. We also want to grow in favor with one another. One of the ways that you express your relationship with God, your praise to God, is by the way you love one another. There's actually a phrase in the Bible. You know, in the Old Testament days, they would come and they would bring their gifts to the altar. And Jesus actually said, look, if you get down here to the altar... And you remember things aren't right somewhere with somebody else. Leave your gift at the altar. Go make it right. Then come back and offer that God, offer that offering to God. So this is about expressing our praise and adoration to God, growing in favor with God, but also growing in favor with one another. Now, two things I'd like to ask of you. 
uh, we have visitors from time to time. And this morning in our early service, I, I don't even remember how many visitors we had. New people I'd never seen before. It was such a great time. You know, new people, uh, if you're new with us today, you really do add a special dimension to our worship services. I don't know how to explain that to you, but it really does sort of lift our spirits to see people that had never been with us before. So here's my request. When we have new people come, two things I'd love for them to see. Now, first of all, this goes without saying, but I'll say it. I want you to welcome new people to our church. If you're going to put forth a lot of effort in speaking to somebody, speak to our new people. But don't overlook the profound impact you have on other people if you are speaking to one another. Now, that's kind of hard to explain. Don't get so caught up in talking to one another you ignore the visitors. But let them see us loving one another. And let them see us worshiping God. Now, they hear us when we sing. And some of us are better than that, better at that than others. And by the way, Adrian sang in our early service this morning. And I want to tell you, she knocked it out of the park. She really did a good job. I think they'll put that on Facebook, won't they? That'll be on Facebook. So visit your church's Facebook page, and you can hear Adrian and the song she sang this morning. But when visitors come to this place, I really want them to leave saying, man, that's a welcoming church. They really made me feel at home. But I also want them to realize those people really love one another and they love and worship God. Uh, can y'all do that for me? Can y'all do that for me? Very good, very good. Uh, Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Today I want to talk to you about growing in favor with God. And I want to talk with you about growing in favor with one another. Now, let me remind you a little bit about the story we looked at last week. There are many, many times that we don't trust God because we don't properly know God. In this story that we have before us, we can see how not thinking about God properly can cause us to, uh, to miss opportunities to grow in our relationship with Him. But misunderstanding what we know about God can also help us as we grow or as we fail to grow in our relationship with our fellow man. This becomes an opportunity for us to trust God. At the heart of the story that we looked at last week is the very foundational uh, truth that God can be trusted. But it's also cautioning us about what we actually believe about God. Now, the foundation of this passage. Look with me at verse number 1. 2 Kings chapter 7, verse number 1. Hear this message from the Lord. This is what the Lord says. By this time tomorrow in the markets of Samaria, five quarts of fine flour will cost only a half an ounce of silver. Ten quarts of barley grain will cost only a half an ounce of silver. Now drop down, if you would, and look at verse number 16. The people of Samaria rushed out, they plundered the Aramean camp, and so it was. Uh, so it was true that five quarts of fine flour were sold that day for half an ounce of silver. Ten quarts of barley grain were sold for a half an ounce of silver, just as the Lord had promised. Just as the Lord had promised. Look at verse 17. And so everything happened exactly as the man of God had predicted when the king came to his house. Now, right here is a passage of Scripture that reminds us that God can be trusted. Do you trust God? 
Do you believe God? We keep these words in front of you every single week. Believing, belonging, committed. This is, this is where we want you to be growing in favor with God and in favor with man. We want you to be a believing people. Our story today is a story that reminds us that God can be trusted. He's watching over you. He's taking care of you. He can be trusted. And this story puts that right in our face. Three times, verse number one is repeated in this story. This time tomorrow in the streets of Samaria, grain's going to sell for this much and barley wheat's going to sell for this much. And, you know, you have this line that's in there three times and it's in there just to remind us God can be trusted. So once again, I want to ask you that question. Do you really trust God? Do you really trust God? Do you believe that God is going to take care of you? No matter what you're facing, do you believe that God is going to take care of you? I really was uh, just caught up in our worship this morning. So many songs we sang that reminded us you can trust God. That song, It Is Well, talked about regardless of how, what, how, what lies out ahead of you. It is well with my soul. Why? Because God can be trusted. You need to understand God can be trusted. Now, one of the things that hinders us from trusting God is the word superstition. We just misunderstand things about God. Can you say the word superstition? Can you say it loud enough the person beside you can hear it? There you go. <laughs> Not sure y'all with me this morning. Look, if you would, down in uh, verse number three. Before I get started on this word superstition, let me, let me show you how God pulls off this miracle. Those of you that were here last week, this will be kind of a quick review. But in verse number three, the Bible tells us there were four men with leprosy. And they were really kind of trying to decide. There was a severe famine in the city of Samaria. And they're trying to decide. They're talking to each other. And they say, guys, if we stay right where we are, we're going to die. If we go back in the city of Samaria, we're going to die. If we go over to the, uh, the Aramean army, there's a good chance they're going to kill us. But there is the possibility that they might give us something to eat. And so they decide they're going to go over to the camp of the Arameans. Now, look down, if you would, at verse number 5. So evening came, and they went out to the camp of the Arameans, but no one was there. Now, why was there no one there? For the Lord had caused the whole army of Aram to hear the clatter of, uh, clatter of speeding chariots and the galloping horses, and the sound of a great army approaching. Now, who made that noise? God did. God is fixing it so he can do exactly what he said he was going to do. Drop down, if you would, in uh, verse number uh, 7. So, uh, well, let me finish verse number 6. The king of Israel, this is what the Arameans are saying, the king of Israel has hired the Hittites and the Egyptians to attack us, they cried. So they panicked and fled into the night. And notice this. They abandoned their tents, their horses, their donkeys, and everything else. And they fled for their lives. Now, God's about to do a miraculous thing down in Samaria. And he's going to use the most unlikely people you could ever imagine. He's going to use four men who had leprosy. By the way, there are some of you here today, you're thinking, God could never use me. I admire this person because of what they can do, and I admire that person because of what they can do, but, you know, man, I'm just not talented like that. I can't sing like that. I can't talk like that. I can't teach like that. I can't do this, can't do the other. I'm shy. You know, I'm not outgoing. And, 
You know, we can come up with every excuse in the world. But remember, our God can be trusted. And regardless of how he has made you, he can be trusted with what he desires to do with you. When it comes to expressing praise to him, we want to be like Jesus. We want to grow in favor with God. And when it comes to what he desires to do here in our midst, God can be trusted. Regardless of what he lays on your heart to do, God can be trusted. He wants to use you. Regardless of who you are, regardless of what talents you have, God wants to use you. Now, let me show you where our thinking about God can sort of get off track. Look down, if you would, at verse number uh, 8. Uh, well, verse number 9. These uh, lepers, they go into the camp, they go in one tent and another, and they're just gathering up food, they're drinking wine, they're, they haven't eaten in so long. And now they got food. Now they got wine, and they're finding all kind of merchandise in these tents. Man, this is, you talking about a big sale, they're having the time of their life. But all of a sudden, verse number 9, finally they said to each other, this is not right. This is wonderful news, and we aren't sharing it with anyone. Now notice, if we wait until morning... Some terrible calamity will certainly fall upon us. Here's what they're saying. If we don't do what is right, something bad is going to happen to us. Folks, let me tell you, that is not the way our God works. Now, this is a hard thing to talk about. It's interesting that you find this passage of Scripture within this story. There is a sense in which sin will find you out. The reason they're having this famine to begin with is because, because the people have abandoned God. They have walked away from God. They have let themselves drift off and are no longer worshiping God as God desires uh, to be worshipped. And so God has allowed the Aramean army to come sort of as a means of punishing them. But we think God is sort of up in heaven following us around with little lightning bolts waiting on us to do the wrong thing. And when we do wrong, doom, he gets us. God is just watching me. And he's waiting on me to make a mistake so he can squash me like a bug. Folks, that's not the way our God is. Does sin cost us something? Is sin bad? Does God get upset when we sin? Yes. But sometimes if we're not careful, we can get a harsh picture of God. And he becomes this God that's just looking for an opportunity to get us. He's just waiting for us to make a mistake so he can straighten me out, so he can fix me. Folks, I want to tell you, our God is a God of grace. And he's not always waiting on you to mess up. But he is always encouraging you to do the right thing. We, we talk from time to time about the difference between the law and grace. The law says you got to. And many of you sort of still live under that notion of the law. Man, I got to do this or God's going to be mad at me. I've got to go to church this morning or God's going to be so disappointed in me. He's not going to like me anymore. Listen, it's not about you got to. It's about what you get to. It really does change your whole perspective if you get the idea of don't be superstitious about God. By the way, when you start down this road, how far are you going to go? Okay, I was bad today. 
My wife and I, we didn't get along, and we had this fuss, and I said stuff I didn't need to say. Now, how far do I have to go down that road before God zaps me? How far do I, I mean, how much mean stuff do I have to say before God starts sending that lightning bolt into my life? And if I go down that road, I start thinking, I've got to love my wife or God's going to get me. Why can't I turn that around and look at God's grace? Not only do I, has God given me a wonderful family and I have an opportunity to love them, but God is giving me time with my family and now here is what I get to do. I get to love them. Let's take church for just a minute. Now, by the way, (laughs) God's not mad at you when you miss church. God loves you. He gives you an opportunity to come to church. But some of you turn it into a legal battle and got to go to church tomorrow. All these kids getting them ready for church. It's just, it's more than I can imagine. (laughs) My wife and I used to, uh, well, her dad attended a church that where I was licensed and ordained. And the pastor there was kind of a growly guy. He wasn't grumpy, but he just kind of, and, and sometimes he would start his message by saying, oh, me and my wife, we fought this morning, you know, get the kids ready for school. And that's the way he, you know, sometimes if we're not careful, church can be drudgery. And it's one of those things we feel we just got to do rather than looking at it as something that we get to do. Folks, I want to tell you, sometimes we need to realize God is giving us opportunity, not only to come and worship Him, but to worship Him and love those that are around us. So this is an opportunity. Don't get superstitious about God and get to thinking, if I don't do the right thing... God's going to squash me like a bug. Our God is a God of grace. Now, does sin cost us? Yes, it does. But understand that our God is extremely long-suffering. Look there on your listening guide at a passage from Peter. In uh, the book of Peter, uh, chapter... Got it here. Hang on. Chapter 2... I mean, sorry, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 9. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise to return, as some people think. No, he's being patient for your sake. He's not willing for anyone to perish, so he's giving more time. The King James uses the expression, he's long-suffering for everyone to repent. Folks, God is loving. God is kind. And if we can just understand his grace, his desire not to give us what we deserve, but grace is all about us getting what we don't deserve. And his mercy is about him not giving us what we really deserve. Do you ever just stop to think about what God has done for you? Do you ever just stop to think about this word grace? Sometimes when we live under this notion of we have to, we've got to, it never really frees us up to see what we get to. This morning, you didn't have to come to worship God. This morning, you get the opportunity to come and join with others as we sing these wonderful songs that teach us about praising God for all that he has done for us. And you don't have to love one another. You get the opportunity to love those that are around you, to encourage those that are carrying the heavy burdens of life. You have an opportunity to lift the spirits of those that are around you. This is an opportunity for you to do something in someone's life that maybe you hadn't had an opportunity all week long. Some of you hadn't seen each other or talked to one another in a few weeks, maybe a couple of months. 
And this morning, you get the opportunity just to sort of lift their spirits, to encourage them. You get an opportunity to grow in favor with God and in favor with men. These four lepers were very superstitious. They got to thinking, you know, if we don't share the good news we've got, some horrible calamity is going to happen to us. What if we turned that around and these lepers were thinking, you know, we got all this food, <laughs> all those hungry people back in Samaria. What if we just go share with them? That is the proper way of thinking with God. Well, there's another word I want to share with you. Not only the word superstitious, but I want to talk with you about this word, suspicious. Look, if you would, uh, there's twice in this passage that we see suspicion at work in the, in the minds of people. Go back to verse number 5. So that evening, they, uh, I'm sorry, I've got the wrong... Uh, no, it is verse number 5. So they went out that evening, and the camp of the Aramean, there was nobody there. For the Lord had caused the whole army of Aram to hear the clatter of speeding chariots and galloping horses and the sounds of a great army. And then someone in the Aramean camp says these words. The king of Israel has hired the Hittites and the Egyptians to attack us, they cried, and they panicked, and they fled into the night. Now, why did they run? It was because they were suspicious of what the Israelite army is going to do. Now, the suspicion at this time worked out well for the people of God. But let me show you a little bit later, if you would, down in verse number 12. The king, this is the king of Israel got up out of bed in the middle of the night, and he told his officers, I know what's happened. The Arameans know we are starving, so they have left their camp and hidden in the cave, hidden in the fields. They are expecting us to leave the city, and then they will take us alive, and they will capture the city. Now, in one situation, the pagans are suspicious, and they abandon their camp. In the other situation, the people of God are suspicious, and they're afraid to go over and see this wonderful thing that God has done in their life. There are some of you that are suspicious. And by the way, we live in a culture where you're being taught to be suspicious of other people. There was a time where Americans, you could shake one another's hand, and that was, that was the deal. When you shook on it, a man's word was his bond. But now we're suspicious of everybody and everything. If you listen to these political ads, they campaign with one another, trying to uh, get you to realize you need to be suspicious of this individual. Don't you vote for him. Don't you vote for this one. Don't you vote for another. And we are being trained to be suspicious of one another. And if we're not careful, just like these people were suspicious and almost missed the blessing of God, you and I can be suspicious of one another and we can miss a blessing of God as well. Have you ever felt the, the, the tug in your heart? Man, I need to speak to old Joe today. But you know, the last time I spoke to Joe, he wasn't very nice to me. And all of a sudden, I get a little suspicious of him. And I wonder, what's he up to? What's his angle? What's he thinking? What's he going to think if I come over and be nice to him. And all of a sudden, suspicious, being suspicious of the other person causes me to miss what God wants to do in my life. When we come together, you and I have an opportunity to really grow in favor with God and in favor with one another. Don't be superstitious in thinking that if I don't, God's going to get me. 
but rather realize this is an opportunity that God has given me through his grace. When you get to looking around and you, God sort of gives you a little nudge, a push of your heart, don't, don't start being suspicious. You'll talk yourself out of it. And you'll miss an opportunity not only to grow in favor with God, but an also, also an opportunity to grow in favor with one another. When people come to Broadway Baptist Church, even if they only come once in their lifetime, <laughs> I'd really like for them to leave thinking, man, those people, they really are passionate about worshiping their God. I don't know if I believe in their God, but one thing I know, those people really believe in their God. Also, I'd like for them to think, man, those people really do love one another. I mean, they really love one another. You can just see it in the way they treat one another. And by the way, if we really learn to love one another, loving people who come in here will just be a nature for us. I mean, it will just be as natural as it can possibly be. Let you and I really strive to be more like Jesus, growing in favor with God and growing in favor with one another. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for these people that are here this morning. And Lord, I pray that you'll help us to be more like Jesus, not being superstitious, not thinking the wrong things about you, but really coming to understand your grace and allowing your grace to motivate us and to see the opportunity that we have just to praise you, to worship you for all the things you've done for us through Christ. And Father, I pray that we could grow more like G Jesus and that we learn to grow in favor with our fellow man. Father, I pray that you'll help us to see the opportunities we have to lift the spirits of one another. Father, today, if there's someone here that has never come into a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that today may be the day they would open their heart and trust in him as their Savior. Thank you for each person that is here. I pray that you'll speak to every heart now as we come to this time of invitation. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this morning, if you're here and you've never trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, I pray that today will be your day of salvation. If you don't understand what to do and how to open your heart and trust Him, I'd love to help you with that. This morning, I'll be here at the front during this time of invitation, and uh, you just come. I'd love to talk with you about how you can have a personal relationship with Christ. We're going to stand together. We're going to sing. As God speaks to your heart this morning, you come. I'll meet you right here at the front.
with the trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless stand.